Danny DeFerrari, welcome to An Actor's Spares. How are you doing, brother? Thank you very much for having me. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great, man. It's a, it's a real pleasure to have you on, man. It was We just spoke off air, and, and yeah. I, I already feel like I know you, you know, and <laughs> You're a total bro, man, and a gentleman, and you were outstanding in this movie. And thank you. It's so perfect that uh, that you're on because one of the reoccurring themes on this podcast is the difference between good acting and great acting. And I've had actors that you know are, are movie stars and actors that are you know literally just starting, and you're at such an amazing place, about to be shot out of a cannon. Dang. And one of the things that's the most important component of great acting is we're lucky enough to get lines, right? But even when you get, you know, a solid supporting and you're not in every scene, it's so like the great actors are able to make a little like subtle choices that are able to just move you in so many amazing ways. And and with your character, I I, I, I don't know if it's, if I'm being totally honest, it's if it's the male thing, if, if it's the bro thing, but I was so... A, interested and fascinated by your character in Shiva Baby. I really, I wanted to know more and I enjoyed every time you're on screen yeah. and, and I kind of kept, I wanted to know more about your, like the, the character story. And yeah, yeah, I just yeah. thought you did such an incredible job with what you were given with that character, man. Oh, thanks dude. Thank you. Seriously. That means a lot. I appreciate and, that. And made off and, and, and all the other things, man, I, I'm so excited to talk to you, but before we dig in, yeah. let's start at the beginning, brother. Where'd you sure. grow up? I grew up in Mount Vernon uh, in Westchester up until oh. I was around like 13, 14. And then we moved to Manhattan. So I kind of, uh, I was always on the outskirts of the city and then finally we moved to the city and um, yeah. Uh, well, and then well, we moved to. Well, if it's cool, we're, we're going to dig in for a minute before yeah, we, we can even, dig. Yeah. Yeah. Dig. So for it. talk to me about, about growing up. Are your parents artists or how did this whole no, well, it's it, My parents are from Argentina and they immigrated to the U S in 1974. And, That's amazing. Yeah. And they had both me and my sisters. Um, I have two older sisters and then my dad was a, a translator at the United Nations. Um, and he was sort of a, a terminologist linguist. So he would uh, translate glossaries, English to Spanish, Spanish to English. Yeah. Um, and my mom is a translator as well. She's a linguist, but they're both, um, they both went to law school. They're lawyers by trade. Um, and- uh, Bilingual then? Yeah, I, wow. I, I, Spanish is actually my first language. That's amazing, man. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. I'm so it's, jealous. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I, we spoke off air. I'm Hispanic and right. I like, I was like conversational, but you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. And yeah, I mean, I really want to get back into it. It's insane how, when you grow up with a language, it, it stays like, you know, I get rusty. And then when I get back down Argentina, um, it takes me like a week and I like my mouth like, cause like your mouth moves differently with these languages. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I do, I'm, I do voiceover in Spanish as well. Um, um, when you think or when you dream, what language is it in? Um, it's interesting. It's usually in English, but um, the more time I spend in Spanish speaking countries, I start to dream a little bit in Spanish. It starts to like seep in. Oh, that's so cool. Because that's what I, you know, that's what I grew up with. And that's what I, like, I spoke Spanish with my parents and my mom, my, um, sorry, my dad's mom uh, lived with us. And wow. So she didn't speak any English. So, like when people would ring the doorbell, um, she the only thing she knew how to say was no home. Yeah. So she'd go, no home, no home. <laughs> no home, no home. So that was the only thing, that was the only thing uh, that she could say. So I would speak Spanish with her. Um, I'd speak Spanish with my parents. Me and my sisters, we spoke English together just because. Okay. But so we were a very, is a bilingual household and like, you know, everything was Spanglish and um, I was rebellious. I didn't want to speak in Spanish at certain points. So I'd answer back in English. And, um, but now it's like, I'm, I feel so, uh, so grateful that I have that tool and yeah, that way so to just, perfect for the, just, to, mean, just uh, to connect with, with other, other people on planet earth is just like, in that regard, you start speaking Spanish um, and it, it feels um it feels really lived in for me when I speak yeah. Spanish as well. It's, it's a big part of me. That's amazing, man. I, I'm, yeah. I'm excited to get to know that. And so I'm, I'm curious then, did you learn both languages from your parents or was it not till you got to preschool, elementary school where you started to really learn English? That's, a, that's actually a great question. I, um, like in nursery school, I was speaking English and because of my sisters. But I know that when I got to kindergarten, I, I was a little 
Uh, it was a little slower. It just yeah. took me a little bit more time. I think there was a, you know, like my house was Argentina, you know, yeah. when you're in there and, you know, we're in Buenos Aires and we're having asados and like empanadas and all that stuff. And my dad's drinking mate in the morning. And then like all of a sudden I show up to, you know, this just public school uh, and it's, it was a culture shock for me. Yeah. I, I don't think I was aware of it, obviously, but it was definitely, it was intense. And um, I remember the teachers like, we may, we're thinking about holding Danny back. And my mom was like having none of it. She was just like, no. So I went to like after school and I just needed a little more attention. I just needed more time to like learn English. <laughs> I did too. In first grade, really? they wanted to yeah. do the same thing to me. That's so funny. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's just, I think it's just like this. There was a bit of a, I don't know if it was like a language barrier, like sort of this like energetic cultural yeah. shift, you know, but everyone was shocked because like, you know, I'm passing white. I'm a white Latino. Yeah. So, um, you know, at least the way the U.S. looks at uh, Latin Americans. Um, white Tinos you know, is what they call us. What, what's that? What, white Tinos? Yeah. <laughs> white Tinos. Some, 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 some white, tino, white Tinos. White Tinos. And uh, Latino Guerito. And, um, you know, I, uh, uh, I'm really grateful for those experiences as a kid, though, because it kind of, it, was, it made me observe a little more and panic a bit. But um, I just remember the first day in kindergarten and uh, the teacher's like, okay, everybody, uh, we're gonna do an exercise and we're gonna write our names. And I like, I was like, I was like, what? Like, what? Uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I was like, I don't, I don't know. I, I could need a cookie if you want. Yeah. And uh, a nursery school buddy of mine who was in my kindergarten class, this kid, Nick, He's like, don't worry, I'll write your name for you. What a bro. Love yeah, that. Yeah, he's a real bro. Really yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I'm curious because, you know, coming from Spanish and then into English, yeah. and forgive me if this sounds pretentious, but was there a level of like performativity to tapping into English when you did it? You know, did you feel like... No, no. I don't, I don't think I was... I felt like I was performing, but um, it was... I definitely... It was definitely intense to go to my friend's houses. Mm-hmm because it was like entering another culture. Yeah. Um, just, it, and it was all very subtle, you know, because Argentina, like the, the, the roots of Argentina are very European. Yeah. Um, but you know, just like sports, like dad sitting watching sports, like football and like, and my dad, my dad was an intellectual, like he didn't, it was, he was, he was actually an Argentinian who didn't follow soccer. Which wow! Was like, yeah, no way. He was into. He was a big reader, avid reader of poetry. Uh, Borges. Um, uh, uh, he's a. He was a big history buff. So uh, later in my life, he and I connected in that in that sort of wheelhouse. That's so beautiful, man. Yeah. So was, uh, I, in these early formative years, you know, what were the, I guess, curation your parents were you getting exposed to you know, Spanish, like novellas and, and cinema or? Well, my grandma would watch telenovelas all the yeah, time. Yeah, so would no, mine. She, she, yeah. was, she was, um, uh, I remember there was one called Rosa Salvaje. Yeah. And it had this amazing uh, theme song because it was in the 80s. And uh, I remember that I could hear like the song, like Rosa Salvaje. <laughs> yeah, it would always be like, the, the, cause she had this little television. Um, yeah. And she'd always sit there and watch and she would watch her telenovelas and, just like eat snacks and my sisters would sit there and watch and I kind of just would always kind of hang in the background I was kind of you know I was my sisters are seven and five years older than I am so yeah. there was a bit of a gap in time so I kind of just like bounced around and did my own thing in the house that's awesome then man so then you know having buddies that didn't have households that were like that you know was growing up were you you know doing like MTV and those kind of yeah like yeah. very conventional things that we all do when we were young or you well, know was I, it you know I was really lucky. I was really lucky because I have two older sisters. So like ah. they kind of, they like shepherd me into like US pop culture. Like yeah. all of us, our older siblings were like music, um, you know, television, film. Um, so I was really exposed to everything right away. So, you know, I talked to my older sister about that a lot. And I think that maybe she had even, even more jarring sort of uh, cultural sort of clashing because she was um, the first and it had she to, was the first yeah. and there was no english in the house for her wow you know, it was all spanish so i'm sure that she had 
an even like more rocky experience in her formative years. Um, wow. She's she, her her Spanish is um, is 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 almost impeccable, particularly how she writes and reads. Wow. Uh, for That's me, so spe speaking, it's great. I'm I can do it. Um, but writing, um, as we say in Spanish, me cuesta. It yeah. costs it costs me a little bit sometimes. Yeah. But in time, as you get exposed, it, it just comes back. It's part of the sort of the operating system, you know. That's beautiful, man. I, I need to do that myself. And you know, growing up, you know, in the we can hang. We can just yeah, like, dude. We should. I'm in. I'm, I'm in Brooklyn. Where are you? <laughs> Love that, man. That's uh, I, dude. That's so beautiful. You know. So before we kind of get to there, you know, you, you mentioned you grew up in the suburbs and then moved to the city. Yeah. So obviously at this point, you know, I, I don't know every Westchester person and individual I know has yeah. a different relationship with the city. Mm -hmm. Were you coming in much as a child or, yeah, or that's, not? It's a, that's a great question. Cause I, um, cause my, since my dad worked at the United Nations, um, I got this education grant to go to the United Nations international school. Um, and so, so that, I, that was in the city. That was in the city. And my wow. dad would commute every day into the city. And my sisters went to that school. We would take the Metro North um, from Mount Vernon and we, they'd go into the city. But it's really close because Mount Vernon's like... It's, four, it's like four stops, right? Or... It's, right, it's right above the Bronx. It's between yeah. the Bronx and Yonkers and Pelham. So there's also that... It has that sort of suburban five borough feel. And, yeah. you know, there are some tough spots um, in Mount Vernon and in Yonkers. And... Um, so yeah, I would. I got into the. I got into the school. They. Um, I remember having an interview, and uh, they were looking at all my grades. And when she was, and I got like a. I got like a D in gym. Oh wow, <laughs> that's so funny. And she's like, we're a little curious about this. How did you get a D in gym? And I was like, I didn't know what to say. My mom, I think, covered up for me. And, you know, <laughs> but I was a big boy. I liked. Uh, I liked as I liked, mothers do, I love. I liked them. to eat a lot when yeah. I was a kid. I was like. So I, it, it was probably the Twinkies that were holding me back. Oh man! But um, well, but, but yeah. So seventh grade, I uh, I started commuting, and I was twelve years old. Oh wow! So I started commuting. I had to wake up at like five thirty, six. My dad would drive me to the train station, and I was going with one of my sisters who was still, um, she was still um, going to school. She was in like, uh, I think she was a senior in high school, and I was in seventh grade. And so we'd take the train together and it was just me like listening to my, you know, I'd make mixes, uh, my cassettes and it'd be me and all these sort of like business people and, and the commuting culture that goes into, into the city from Westchester. It's, it's so many people. I don't know if it's millions, but it's, it's a lot. So, you know, they take the train into Grand Central yeah. and then you'd have to learn how to take public transportation. So I would have, to, we'd have tokens at the time. Yeah. It was just before Metro cards. Wow. So like I had tokens, my dad would give me a bag of tokens, you know. And, and you would go like, on your own? At your first I went, I went with my sister at first. And okay. She would, she would go with me. And then, um, then I started going by myself eventually. But it was, um, it was really intense. Yeah, because I feel like that takes such immense confidence you know like i remember being here at 16 visiting nyu where i went and i was like there's no fucking way i could ever live here you know and it, it was intense yeah I, I, it was intense but it was also really exciting like the cool thing about going to grand central was like you know i'd have like my parents would give me a couple bucks to have on me for safety yeah. you know and um so i would uh, i would always go to the same sort of stand and get i'd always get like a, a pretzel in the basement in the, down in the basement, yeah. the pretzel oh, dude, guys. The and I, and, and yeah. I made friends with all of the, like the snack dudes. I, yeah. And so like, you know, we all knew each other and I'd always get like a pretzel and a, and a Coca-Cola and then, um, and then get on the train. It was sort of my treat. And um, it was interesting to have those sort of meditative moments as a kid, you know, yeah. listen to music. And I, I was able to reflect, I think. Um, I was always jealous of all the kids who lived in the city. Yeah, me too. Because they could just like walk they could just walk home and that was it. And, and they always seem so confident, you know, like yeah, 11 they, they, and they're they 24, you they know? Had no, they, had, they had no care in the world. And I was like, well, I got to commute, buddy. I'll see yeah. you later. Yeah, you know, like, so. And, and talk to me with that school, you know, I imagine just because there is literally so much culture in New York City yeah. Yeah, that yeah. open up your eyes to things like theater and, and Broadway and, and cinema or. Yeah, you, it, yeah it, like it, um, it just introduced me to a lot of different people. So it was like, 
I also, there were a lot of Argentinians there too. There are a couple. So I was like, it was the first time that I met American Argentinians. Wow. So it was also kind of, um, it, I kind of, I was very comfortable at my public school and I had a yeah. lot of amazing friends and I had some amazing teachers there. Um, but uh, it, it was another side of myself that I didn't know until I got to the school. And yeah. also like I discovered what cologne was. Oh yeah. That was 13 kids, for me you know, too. Yeah. You know, cause yeah. I was like, you know, I came from, I went to a public school and, and I had an education grant. And so there are also these kids who had a little bit more money. They were Manhattan kids. And like, they had like Ralph Lauren polo and like blue jeans and cool water. Yeah. And, you know, and they had the cologne and sometimes their cologne would break in their backpacks for some, you know what I mean? Oh, so like, and that intense Hugo would, Boss. It, it would yeah. smell. And I, but yeah. I was like so into it. And like people were wearing North Face and like. Oh man, it was like, Gap for me. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, Gap yeah. was like, yeah. or none Gap. Banana yeah. Republic, everything fell apart. But Gap was solid. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's where I got um, my first Marty McFly vest. I wanted that so bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I got like those weird like t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirts with the hoods. Oh yeah, those were And they were great. like green and yellow and it was amazing. Um, I had sweatpants with patches on them. Oh dude, so radical. Love yeah. that, man. And, and then- Let's bring what, it back. What, while you're there, you know, at, at what point is the activation experience then, you know, or did it not come till later? You know, tell me. What do you mean activation? Of, of like, sorry, of like of, of the arts and, and wanting to be an well, artist. Well, I wasn't, I remember <clears throat> it was probably, well, my sisters were all in the high school plays. Okay. So, so we would go and watch them. And uh, one of my sisters, she was an incredible actress. Like, wow. In, like, it was like, it was palpable. It was intense. And I remember, um, she did a play and she played Joan of Arc. And she, she wore, uh, uh, what is it, uh, armor, body yeah. armor. And I remember the audience reacting to her, like one of the lines was like, get this, get this fucking thing off of me, something like that. And the whole audience started laughing and, and then they opened it up the armor and she was in there. And that was like my first sort of like big introduction to like, like this artistic world and like yeah. that the school like supported the arts yeah. and like acting was an educational instrument actually. Um, That's amazing. I think that my, pa my parents always supported the arts and they were always into, um, into going to theater and Argentina, the artistic um, culture there is, is very strong. It's always yeah. been Argentine cinema, theater, um, all the music, you know, I grew up there was always Esther Piazzolla playing in the house. Oh, wow. Um, unfortunately, my dad would play a lot of Gregorian chant as well, which, <laughs> which was always a horror for me. Yeah. But um, we grew up with that stuff. And so when I went to the UN school, it kind of, it really put all that together. Um, it, it was really great. And then in ninth grade, <clears throat> the beginning of high school, I didn't make the basketball team. And my English teacher was like, why don't you audition for this play? And it was Little Shop of Horrors. Wow. And I auditioned for Mr. Mushnick. Yeah. And, and I could sing. And so he's like, do you want to do it? And I was like, uh, okay, you know, I'll do it. Sure. Yeah. And um, we did the play. And I was like surrounded by like, first of all, one of the, there was a senior who I was in love with and she was in the play. Uh, and um, I was, I couldn't believe I was like spending time with her. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, the, when was, those crutches are so intense yeah, when you're great. young. It was yeah. great. I was just like, I'm just, this is so great. She and I are just in the same room. I'm so yeah. happy. You know, like, um, and I was like, I have no shot. I don't even did know she what know? having a shot means. No, but I remember we did a scene where I'm supposed to, because she plays Audrey. Yeah. She played Audrey. And I remember uh, the director like would really get in. He's like, so like, what does Mushnik feel? when he's talking to Audrey right now. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I don't know. Uh, he's like, think about having a bumblebee inside of you and get angry or something. Like, it was really very, very yeah. bizarre, but also like, I kind of dug it. Yeah. And I remember like making like an angry face and like yelling at her. And afterwards she's like, oh my God, that was really scary. That was really good. Wow. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> Brush it off the shoulder, man. That's amazing. Well, yeah, I'm a pro. And so you, was it that production that really- That production, we did the production. It was a hit. It was so fun. 
And I remember people just like coming up to me and, and being nice to me. I think it comes down to that. It's just like that simple. I wasn't like, um, I felt relatively comfortable socially in school and I had some good friends and, um, you know, everyone has their own sort of Demons. middle school, yeah, middle school and high school sort of, you know, weights on their shoulders and stuff like that. But I, um, so it felt really, it was really gratifying. And like, then like going to have lunch in the cafeteria was a completely different experience. The, the energy shifted for me and I felt, um, bizarrely like I was accepting myself more. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize, you know, I didn't realize that I even needed to, you know, you, as you have your formative years, you start to realize certain things um, and people, people giving you good vibes is, is a really, it, it should not, it does the soul good. It's soothing, but yeah. it's like, also like, it's, it should not, go, it, it shouldn't go unnoticed. Like it's really important kindness and empathy and yeah. um, positivity goes a long way. And that really catapulted me into also becoming a better student. Cause I was, I was kind of lazy and yeah. very distracted kid and, was think, college always on your mind or, or not really? No, I mean, it's a funny story. My dad, I remember it was like, I think it was the end of ninth grade and my grades were still garbage. Yeah. And my dad was like, because I, you know, everyone, all the teachers were like, he's really smart, but he's just so goddamn lazy. Like, yeah, can I, somebody fucking tell this kid to like pick up a book? Like, what yeah. the hell's wrong with him? Um, and my dad, I remember he got the report card. And he's like, so I got your report card. Oh, the silence would kill me. And I was like, I was like, oh yeah, cool. That's great. Man. Cool. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go watch TRL. Yeah, and Carson goes, Daly. Yeah, Carson Daly. And he goes, <clears throat> so where are you thinking about? You think about college? And sort of like yeah. So well, because cool. academia was his life, right? You know. Yeah, my dad. Yeah. No, my my parents. My my parents are very intelligent yeah. individuals, and my dad was. Uh, uh, a human encyclopedia Britannica. Yeah. I think he had a photographic memory and he, <clears throat> he didn't have to work hard. It just, it would just like download. Came natural to him. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, and she's like, so college, where do you want to go? Do you have any thoughts? Yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I was thinking like Harvard or Yale, you know. <laughs> I love it, dude. And the way you're laughing right now, he started, he laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed in my face. And I was like, how dare you, you know? And then like, uh, I got pissed off and I just went to my room. And then he, he went to my room and he, he knocked on my door and he was just like, can I come in? And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's your house. Come yeah. in, whatever, you know. Brooding. <laughs> <laughs> Playing Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, and, uh, and, hurt. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, was, yeah. I, was, I was definitely, I think it was March of the Pigs that was like- Oh dude, the character. best. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's start, start the rebellion. <laughs> I know. I just, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, he came in and he was like, look, if you want to do stuff with your life, you just have to get better grades. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's it. He's like, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not here to mock you. It's just whatever you want to accomplish. If you don't have good grades, you're not going to get what you want in life. Yeah. And, and the way he said it to me was, I thought that, I think that was the most important uh, moment I had with my dad. I had the exact same moment, man. Oh, really? This is crazy. Yeah, that's amazing, man. He just, he, it's like when they, he really leveled with me. Yeah. He didn't yell at me. He was just like, come on, dude. Like, yeah. it's, it's like, it's like TikTok, step it up. And, yeah. and then after that, I was like, okay. So I stepped it up. Um, I started getting better grades. And for some reason, theater was, it helped me memorize because you have to memorize lines. And it, so then, like, all of a sudden, I was retaining more information in class. I was more interested. Um, and I ended up, I ended up excelling in, in, in high school eventually. And that's so beautiful I, to hear. Thank you. But the thing is like, you know, I had to work hard. Like I had to, like I, once it, it takes me a while for things to get in my head, but once they're in there, they never yeah. leave. Yeah. Uh, like my dad was like in and then out. Yeah. My mom is very like, like bang away, bang away, repeat, repeat. And then it sticks in. Um, so I kind of got best of both worlds with them. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. So then, yeah. you know, w was that Harvard and Yale dream still very much reality for you? No. Or? 
<laughs> that moment changed it all. Nah, so- dude. I was like, because you know, you, you start to realize you see all all of the all your classmates who want to go to Yale and Harvard, and they're and like, don't get in. And- no, they're the ones who are getting like the straight days. And yeah. I was like, I, I was like, I can't compete. I can't keep up. I was just yeah. like, I was like, yeah. it's just not. It's not for me. And um, eventually, uh, I I got into a couple of pretty good liberal arts schools, but I was really. Um, I was really dead set on, on being an actor by the time I was probably a junior in high school. Were you, I mean, I asked because you were in New York city, were at any point in high school, were you, were you pursuing agents or anything or? No, no, I didn't do anything like that. I was, it it wasn't on my radar. I, I, I was, I did an acting program between my junior year and my senior year this thing called BADA, which was yeah. like the British Academy of Dramatic Art. Oh, awesome. And it takes place in Oxford. And at this, uh, at, at the time it was at Balliol College. Yeah. And um, it was mainly Americans, but there were some Brits. And uh, I learned a lot about Shakespeare. The Elizabethan that. Texas, it, it, it's so imperative, man. It, it's unreal. And we've yeah. worked on sonnets and we did scene work. And I remember doing scene work and um, and that British actor and everything think is Henry Goodman. Mm-hmm. He he played uh, he played Shylock. I think he was on, in uh, Merchant of Venice, BBC. They, you know how the Brits they would do they would do the plays and then they would film them in these yeah, really, like, totally really and, kooky, funny ways. National theater live, yeah, 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 yeah all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Yeah. And so I remember doing scene work with him, and I, I don't remember any of it because I was so like um, stressed out about like hitting the the, the iambic. The, yeah, the me- hitting the yeah. meter and like, and then and and I listened to him and I hit everything and um, it went really well and I was like and someone told me they're like wow Danny I like felt like I got to see your personality act yeah. and I it just stuck with me because so I was like oh like you got to know me yeah by me playing a character let alone in an Elizabethan text, which might yeah. well be a different language. Right. And I don't, you know? remember, I don't remember any of it. I just remember trying to really follow what he was telling me to do. And I did it. And I think I did it and everyone was laughing. And it was a, it was a very interesting sort of subtle, like sort of like soft moment uh, in sort of this genesis of wanting to be an actor. And so I, I went to that acting program and um, I met a lot of amazing people. I'm friends with three people still. Um, still working. Yeah. Uh, two buddies of mine, they're both working actors. Um, it's funny, this guy, Joel Johnstone, he's on, uh, Maisel. Awesome. Uh, and a buddy, Will Greenberg, who's, he was on this TV show, Wrecked. And he's, okay. he works nonstop. He's, they're both, they're both awesome. And we all, you know, send fun mess, uh, messages to each other. And I brought Will to the Shiva Baby premiere in LA. That's so cool, man. House. So it was really, it was really, um, it was really special to share that with him. Um, yeah. So I did that and I went back to, to high school and I, uh, everyone's like, I, I came back with like a turtleneck and a leather jacket. I was, <laughs> I, but it was like, it was, yeah. it was, you know, but it was like September and people were like, you, aren't you a little hot? Right yeah. And I was like, I am, I'm really hot. <laughs> the and, greasy and, hair slick back. Yeah, I love it, dude. Yeah, yeah. Oh, whatever, I don't care. I love Shakespeare. Um, and, um, I got really serious about it and I did a play called The Singing Detective um, that was based on a BBC series with Michael Gambon. Wow. And they, they did this at, movie. at your high school? Yeah, I, the, my biology teacher, he, um, he was a big theater guy. He was a British guy and he, he, uh, he, was, he was really into doing experimental stuff. He would do That's like so cool. experimental like Brecht. We did like Mother Courage. Wow, um, man. Yeah, and then he did, um, I think he did a version of Mephisto at one point. Like, he was just, he was doing like- doing incredible he, stuff. It was, it was unreal. It was yeah. unreal what we were doing in high school. And we did this thing in Detective, and I got to play um, this detective who's going in and out of hallucinations. And he's like, his like body is falling apart and he's in like a hospital bed. And, um, but like, I got to like be like a private eye as well. And I got to yeah. sing with a jazz band and- um, that's when I was like, I know, I, I know I can do this and I know I want to do this. Yeah. Um, and so I got into, uh, I was between like BU and NYU and, um, NYU was where I wanted to be. I just wanted to be in New York. I yeah. wanted to, I wanted to just like grit it out and be gr- like just dirty. And I wanted to like, you know, make it here. So I'm, 
I'm continually trying, you know? So did you go? I went to NYU, yeah. Oh, me too. Oh, really? Yeah. What did you study? What, what Strasburg uh, for two years and then oh, Stone wow. Street for two years. Oh, right. Stone yeah. Street. Anthony yeah. Grasso? Uh, no, it was like, I had, I had Zach Galligan, Jim McCabe, uh, Ted Slaberski. Oh, Ted. I love yeah. Ted. Ted's still yeah. my coach to this day. The best. It's amazing. Yeah. I know Andy Ted from Oh, Ted. Andy Roth. Oh, yeah. D- dude, Ted. So did you know Logan Marshall Green then? Um, I don't know him. I know him from Williamstown just like in passing, but I don't know him very well. Yeah. But oh, um, yeah, yeah another him. great, because I knew that was Ted's Williamstown time. That's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah. So, so. so I, I, if you don't mind, you know, I, oh. obviously we're, I promise we're going to get to the project, but no, talk, totally. talk to me about your NYU experience. Well, I study at the Atlantic Theater Company. Oh, uh, that's intense, dude. I'm still recovering. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> I, I, no, I, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure in like today's culture, they're, they're, I mean, from what I hear, they're cracking down on that oh uh, what do you mean just the way they you know playwrights and and atlantic used you know playwrights used to do the nude thing and then atlantic used to be really just kind of break you to make you Strasbourg was too and i think now they're really trying to to stop that kind of you know mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. where safe spaces and the, just a just totally different level of thinking than it was when probably things you and are, i went things are very different now culturally yeah. Um, and I prefer, it's weird, man. I, they were really tough on us at the Atlantic, but I, I don't think that I'd have the, the competitive nature, the spirit to, with myself yeah. to keep hustling and pushing if Atlantic hadn't sort of drilled that idea that like, no one's going to give you anything. You have to totally. go out there, you have to go out there and you have to get it. You have to you have got to create your own opportunities because yeah. no one else is going to do it for you. Um, and I really responded to that mentality and someone gave me practical handbook for the actor. Yeah. And then uh, before I went to the Atlantic, but someone gave me true and false that David. Oh Manfred. yeah. Who's who is part of Atlantic. Yeah. He yeah. founded it with Bill yeah. Macy. And I yeah. was just like, yeah, this is where I want to go. I want to create stuff. I don't want to just like audition and, Get people's, wait, permission, wait. Yeah. get people's permission to work. I want to just like go out there and kick ass and be a business person and uh, also an artist and wow. a hustler. And that's what happened. I, I, uh, I learned a lot from them. The first year was really hard because it's like, it's, it's like a, it's like a, it's. Were like, you there with Elizabeth Olson then? No, I think I was a little bit before her. I was there with Zoe Lister Jones. Got it. Okay. Um, and uh, this guy, David Call. Do you know David Yeah, Hall? yeah, 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 for David sure. David Call, yeah. So they were there um, and we were all in class together and the three of us, we had a great time working together and we learned a lot. And So did you stay for all four years then? At I, only stay, I only stayed for two years. Oh, okay. Um, but I, um, you know, the first year was tough, but I learned a lot working on, a, we did this thing called Through Lines. Yeah. Um, where we had to sort of, work through the through line of a character's journey and I was assigned Hamlet and um, it was very difficult not just because it was Hamlet but because you had to break down every scene uh, and you had to do the technique we had all these different very dry steps yeah. um, and at the Atlantic what I actually realized what was great about it is I learned how to direct myself a little bit That's because you, really, you had to ask yourself like what's literally happening in the scene yeah what does your character want what action are they going to use to get there? Yeah. And then we actually use a little bit of sense memory. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. I remember it's called, as they would call, I don't know if it's changed. They, I know yeah. that they would tweak the technique every few years, but there was this thing called the as if. Oh, okay. So, so it's like, when in your life have you, you know, wanted to get a donut? Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. then you try to connect sort of whatever. Um, so I, I learned a lot about how to direct myself and sort of under really understanding a scene first yeah before i memorize before i do all that um first year was intense second year was great we like did like um uh film noir oh my favorite man i learned i learned learned how to act with stillness and intention at the same time and that was incredible and we did clifford odette's uh, oh had a great uh performance technique teacher uh, he's an actor his name is paul ursioli 
Okay, um, I've heard of him. And uh, he was he was he was he said he was a great teacher, really That's, great guy, great teacher. Yeah. So after those two, you know, well, first maybe tough year and a, a great second year. Yeah. Where did you want to go? You know, for those who don't know that are listening, NYU yeah. you, you assigns you a studio for your first two years called a primary studio, and then in your third and fourth year because it's a BFA program, you know, you're 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 doing your intensity part first two years and then your third and fourth year are kind of beautifully elective you can do whatever you want so what, what was on your itinerary um i want i went to rada i studied oh. at the royal academy for a whole for, year for a semester just one semester wow um and i went back to london and um it uh it also really kicked my butt because that summer before i went to london i was actually an uh, an apprentice at uh, Williamstown. Okay. And I, I learned so much um, at Williamstown, and, but it was also a very intense summer. So that's where I met Ted that summer. Okay. The best. Unreal. He's an yeah. unreal dude. He's amazing. And then I went to London. So I think when I got to London, I was a little burnt out. Yeah. And um, it took me a while to sort of catch up. And I had a tough time in London with like the culture and it felt, it was just bizarre because, and I had some British friends and being in a program in another country, but you're surrounded by Americans. Yeah. Felt, uh, it's a tricky situation. Inauthentic I, or? Maybe, I yeah. don't know. I don't know. All I know yeah. is that I felt disconnected on a certain level. Yeah. Um, and that affected me. Uh, but we ended up doing some really amazing work and I had a great, uh, this, this teacher who I worked on, a, a Cassius monologue with him. Oh, and, that, uh, I did Cassius for Juilliard. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. 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 Well, that's amazing. When yeah. did he get the narrow world? Yeah, yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. 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 That's and exactly the one. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, um, you know, I learned a lot working with him and I remember he was just like, he's like, you're thinking too much. You're thinking too much. Here, walk with me. Come, 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 come. Come on, let's walk. do the, do the monologue. I was like, now he's like, yeah, well, we're walking. Just come. Yeah. Follow me. And he was like, oh yeah. And then we went to the bathroom and like, we both stood at the urinals. He's like, keep saying, tell me the moment. No. Yeah. And I was just like, uh, you know, so we're, yeah. you know, we're taking a piss and I'm like, why man, he does destroy the narrow world like a Colossus. He's like, yeah. And then we he petty like, man walk under his huge legs to peep about yeah, and find yeah, ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, dishonorable grace. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, um, and, and he said to me, do you know this, this conversation probably happened like this between Brutus and Cassius. Yeah. It could very, may very well be that they were just hanging out like friends. Either they were going to the bathroom or maybe they were making dinner or sitting yeah. by a campfire. He said, it's, it's not, it's not rocket science. It's, it's, it's humanity. Yeah. Um, so I learned that was a very important moment for me um, while I was taking a piss. Yeah. And, and I, Two birds, uh, one stone. Yeah, precisely, precisely, precisely. Yeah. And I was like, um, so London went well and it was, there were some, it was tough for some reason. I, you know, I couldn't put my finger on it. But I never, yeah, I didn't have the, the confidence to go live in another country with a bunch of random students. So I, I'm, I'm very envious of that. That's amazing, man. It's a lot. Thanks. Yeah. It, it's, um, it can be an intense experience, but when I got back to New York, um, I was working on a double major in history. Oh, wow. So I finally got to really start taking some academic classes at, yeah. uh, at the College of Arts and Science and at oh. NYU. And I, um, I really loved, I really, I really enjoyed that part of my university experience the most, which was like- That's awesome. Doing academics, but then still auditioning for plays. Yeah. For the Tish ones. Yeah. Like yeah. At the Playwrights Horizons, they yeah. had all of their like little workshop plays. So, yeah. you know, uh, I got to do so many cool little one acts, 10 minutes, 10 minutes uh, plays. And I got to act with other students from other, from other studios. Conservatories, so like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like I got to act with Strasbourg people and I remember doing a play and this, this girl was doing her Strasbourg thing, her sense memory work Yeah. in a corner. In and the I chair, was, dropping the yeah, legs, yeah. Doing whatever, you know, going, yeah. going to where she needed to go. And I really, I really loved seeing that. I really respected it because I was, that's just not how I worked at the time. Yeah. And, um, but then we would just be doing the same play together. And so I did that and I, um, 
uh, I finished my double major and I was doing the plays at NYU and then, and then school ended and my friends and I had a theater company. Before you had, had, had graduated, you started this? We started a theater company because we um, did this academic class in London. They had a few academics and they were like, uh, we need you to sort of create a mock production of any Shakespeare play you want. Wow. So we would be assigned like set designer, director. Yeah producer uh, costumes and we did Julius Caesar wow and we did it and it went really well and we're like why don't we just put this up let's start a theater company yeah. so uh we did a th we started a theater company we brought it back to New York and we put up Julius Caesar it was 2003 and it was right when uh Iraq was happening the yeah. war and we you know what we, a fitting we thought, piece we thought we thought we were so clever like it's just set in Iraq and yeah at us and like macho but all of us are just like not we're not macho dudes so, <laughs> you know we're, we're yeah. a bunch of, we were all a bunch of we we're uh, i always speak for myself i'm a bit of a soft doing it uh but anyway um so we did the play and then we kept the theater company going and then our senior year we did a kurt vonnegut play called happy birthday wanda june yeah and and he was still alive at the time and we ended up working with him on the play that's uh, amazing we, yeah we got in touch with him and we uh we would have lunch with him. He'd take us out for steak and fries and, and he would give us notes and cuts and, and why he wrote the play. And he talked about his experiences in World War II as well, actually, because wow. um, he was a veteran. Um, we'd ask him a few questions about things and he was open to it. Um, and then he, we met up with him and he gave us his little lithographs. Yeah. Um, and so it was a really, really, really special experience to, to be able to work with him and experience him. And, experience his um his kind generous spirit i mean he yeah. was he had a dog and the dog's name was flower yeah he was a that's, great guy he was a great guy that's so beautiful man and i i feel like at least in my experience from so many of my comrades you know you know that a lot of the time my experience in that way he was very different but you know the whole time they were told like you're so lucky to be here you you know you're 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 just you don't know how lucky you are and you know <laughs> this is who was okay, here I'm lucky, yeah I'm lucky. yeah it's i was spending two hundred fifty thousand dollars <laughs> and and <sighs> yeah i i definitely did not get to create your own work thing i had to find that out the hard way so when you graduated right. You weren't going to the market thinking like I'm. I'm just going to get an agent, book Law and Order, and then I'm going to book you know the David well, Fincher. I mean, I, David Fincher would have been great. I yeah. uh, I ended up. I was like, you know what? I I want an agent by the time I graduate. That was did, like a goal. I want. Did that a, happen? No. Yeah. No. It took years. Um, Me too. Yeah. What was it? Were they called the Ross reports? Yeah, the ones that were on the, the so was, you go to drama like, bookshop. Yeah, it's a little yeah. book and you go yeah, through and it gives totally. all the names of the agents. They used yeah, to have yeah. the one across from 721 Broadway, Shakespeare, right? Yeah, Shakespeare yeah, and Co. Yeah, yeah, the, I and love that story. That was a great, I would go down there and just hang out in the basement. And Me replay. too, I time. like that better than the drama bookshop. I, I Absolutely. really, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you with that one. It's just the space, it had a, it had its own personality. It was like this yeah. living, breathing organism. I can't believe yeah. there's something about it. But totally. I am. Um, what did I do? I, uh, what were we talking about? The submitting oh. to agents. Right, this, yeah, right, yeah. the Ross reports. Yeah. And so I remember like I would send out the letters. I did like mailings. Like I would send out like hundreds of these manila yeah. envelopes. I still remember certain agents' names. Oh yeah. Like, so when I see the name, I'm like, I remember I sent you so many envelopes. You know, yeah, you never directors. responded. <laughs> no, I mean, I, mean, they, they, I, I, rem I, I interned at a casting director's office. Wait, and the amount of mail- Can you mail say which one? Uh, Alexa Fogel. Oh, the best man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's great, and yeah. I had a really good experience interning there. And was that um, in the Wire time? I think it was just near the end or after. Got it. Um, and I, uh, I just remember they would get so much mail. So I real, I finally understood the finally, other side. I finally understood the other side. It was just like there's just so much going on. Like there are only people, you know, like yeah. the people. They're doing the best they can. Like they've got responsibilities. And so um, with the Ross reports, you know, I'd keep mailing and mailing and I didn't get any agents for, it took about four years after college. It took me to five. Wow, dude, our stories yeah. are so similar. It's crazy. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it's, we, it's, we, it's, I'm sorry, go, go on. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, did you get stuck on the, at least I did the one-on-one -on -one actors connection grind? Well, I did that for a while and I met some, 
I met some really great casting directors. Uh, and that's, I'm glad you bring up one on one because that's where I met uh, Bob Krakauer. Yeah. I heard you speak about that before. And he really, I didn't really know how to act on film. And I think that's probably why it took me a while to get an agent because I was living in a, in the theatrical world. Yeah. And I remember taking, I remember my first class with him. Were you there with Andre Holland then? No, I think Andre, I never ended up with Andre for some reason. Okay. Um, I know he's like another I, disciple of Bob's. Oh, really? I didn't. Yeah. He may have been in one class, like in the beginning, but Got I don't it. remember. Okay. But I, um, I remember that we took the class. It was on like, it was on 14th Street and like between 6th and 7th. It wasn't at the one on one studio, but it was with one on one. Got it. And it was like this sort of bizarre brownstone. And I remember we got into the room and everyone was, a re- it was a really cool group of people. And that Krakow makes it the best. In. It was, it was an ama- amazing group of people. And, and Bob walks in and he said, I just want the guys let you know. He's like, do you guys know who lived here in this, in this building? And we were like, no, he's like Miles Davis. Wow. And I was like, oh, cool. Like he's, this is, this is cool. This is, I like this. I like this guy's vibe. I like what's going on here. I like that. He's like, like paying homage to, to greats, to yeah. the greats. And, um, so I, I did the class and I, and I finally understood behavior. Yeah. Which I didn't really get. I thought it was all about emotion. Yeah. And uh, I learned about just like, you know, like if this is the scene, like right now it's like, I'm looking down, um, I'm holding a glass and taking a sip of water. Yeah. And those were things that I didn't, uh, it, it just didn't occur to me that they were just as important um, as you know your emotional prep or your creating a backstory yeah. because you're helping the audience <clears throat> have a context. Totally. You need the, totally. the, the, it's at the end of the day, if the audience doesn't really get what the fuck you're doing, then, then you lost, you, you, you have to let them know exactly what you're doing. So if anything you do, that's easy to follow, yeah. I think is a plus in, 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 in doing a scene. Yeah. So when you talk about one-on-one and all that, that's where I met Bob. It was a bit after college. And then um, I still didn't have an agent then. And then I went to Williamstown one summer at their, um, their non-equity program. And uh, I met a manager and she liked my work and she connected me with some agents and I kind of like fought a bit. There was also the, it was also during the financial crisis. 2008, yeah. So then it was like, I was working with people, but there were, I didn't have an audition for a whole year. You know, like anyone starting out, it was just impossible. I can only Um, imagine, man. So it was was definitely, but it, it, it toughened me up and I, uh, Eventually things started moving again, moving. And then in 2010, I booked my first, my first, uh, my first guest star. There was, was that Mercy or was that Law and Order? Mercy. Yeah. yeah. It was Mercy. Yeah. yeah. And then I, yeah. and then I booked, and then I booked Law and Order about a month later. Oh, wow. So cool. And I thought You're I was like, fire. I thought I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to be making millions. Soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I was even in the opener where I find a dead body. Uh, yeah. Law and Order. And, and, and for all the struggling actors listening, if you don't mind sharing, what were you doing survival wise while you were restaurants, restaurants, yeah. restaurants, restaurants, Got it. I, you know, I was a bar back at so many restaurants in New so, York. I did the bar back thing. Then, I, bar, then I bartended and um, yeah, you know, I, I, uh, I also like, I feel like working in restaurants, although they are taxing and hard on the body, you meet so many amazing people. Yeah. Um, uh, and you learn so much about behavior. You learn so, so much, about, much. Oh my! So much God. about performance. You learn yeah. so much about class structure. Um, you learn so much about your own worth as a yeah. person. Yeah. Um, and the, the I cherish I cherish the years that I've worked in restaurants. Um, I think it's almost like a was it the Peace Corps? Yeah. I feel like every, everyone should do the Peace Corps for a year, and everyone should work in a restaurant for a yeah. year. Yeah. So that you'll understand you know, uh, how amazing and also how ridiculously expensive <laughs> it is. And you know, also just uh, how to tr- treat people. You know what I mean? Like just the, oh yeah. the dynamic of being small so someone else can be large is such a, it, it, it's, 
it's crazy, you know, and that changes obviously when you're a bartender, but when you're lower on the totem pole, you know, you, you see the best and the worst of people. Well, when you're a bartender, you're, you're a bit of a sort of a conciliary for a drug, yeah, you know, totally. like yeah. you know, people, they have, you're in front, you know, you're in front of yeah. like what, what they want. Yeah. So you're the gatekeeper. So you have power. Um, but at the end, they're the ones who have the power because they're, they're paying. Yeah. So it's, it, it's always interesting to those dynamics. And I, it was, I remember bartending and like, sometimes the meaner I was, the more tips I would get. For sure, was, man. Dude, it was that's very, I, it fascinated me. I was just like, oh my God, I'm being such a jerk. And yeah. This person just left me a 30% tip. Wow. There's, there's something to this. There's something. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's great character research. And then when, when you got those two things, you know, having that on your reel it really does you know even even if it's like uh more water it's crazy how much that just can change everything for you so it, it does and also energetically you you begin to like the validation yeah you, you validate yourself and you walk better and you're like okay i actually was able to do that like i got through it and mercy for me was um I look, I look at that experience so fondly because like it was my first time on set and uh, the director was so kind and um, I played like a drummer who got attacked by penguins yeah. at a zoo and like, and I was hiding the fact that I stole these penguins. It was just a ridiculous situation. And I just, I had so much fun and I was just so happy to be working and yeah. um, it was, it was snowing in February. I was like, are we going to go to this? There was like two feet of snow outside. We went to Jersey. And we just hung out in this sort of little like hospital compound and, and did a thing. Yeah. That's amazing, man. And, and yeah. I'm curious, you know, because so many people I went to school with that didn't even get credits, you know, did the I'm going to move to L.A. and be a movie star thing. Did that, you know, especially once you had those credits, did that thought ever enter your mind or were you determined yeah. to build yeah. it up? No, I mean, I, I, I always, I think LA is tricky because he, I know, I, I remember someone asking a casting director, I was around, they're like, where should I go? Should I be in LA or should I be in New York? And the casting director was just like, just be where you really want to live. Yeah. And um, I, I love New York. Uh, you know, my family's here. Um, you know, I, I, I just, um, so I did, I did the LA thing for, I only went for like two weeks, but I wanted to meet like my team out there and I wanted to sort of feel what LA was like and sort of expand yeah. my, my, my business, so to and speak. And your network. and My network. Yeah. And, and also I have very close friends who are in Los Angeles. So I went and I was like, oh, I kind of dig this place. So I go back and forth. Um, okay. I've gone to work there before. I've, I've booked a pilot out there before. I've, 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 I've te when you go, you test. Yeah. And they fly you out there. Um, that was pre pre COVID, so I don't know what I don't know what anything's going to look like in the next few years. Yeah, yeah. Me how either. they decide how they decide who they want, but um, I like LA very much. Um, it's I don't know if it's it's a permanent home for me. I agree uh, completely. It's a great place to visit. It's yeah. a great place to work. But uh, amazing I'm, people there, uh, and um, the the food is amazing out there. Yeah, yeah reason, there's, I don't know why you eat an avocado out there. You're just like. <laughs> I know. The, it's it, so much better than the avocado ate on the, at a dump in a dumpster in Brooklyn. Like with <laughs> That's amazing. And and you know what, to get ate an avocado in a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> to get to get, you know, I, I I don't want to take up your old time, man. I'm sorry if I'm I'm over talking. No, but we, we can we can go as long as you want. Oh, awesome. So yeah, you know, then when you to I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but when you get something yes. like made off working yeah. on that, did that getting that to that, even just getting it, did it feel yeah. like this is it finally, this is going to be my calling card? Um, yeah. I mean, I felt really settled once I booked it and it was very good. Um, it was just an amazing accomplishment, particularly because I got to work with Richard Dreyfus and Black yeah. Banner. Yeah. Um, Richard was, he was so sweet. He was so great. We, we had a great time. And I remember during the first table read, uh, they sat me next to him. Cause it wow. was, it was the Madoff family in the middle of this big table at, yeah. at ABC. And I was like, I was like kind of nervous. And then I just saw him, I just like looked at him and he was just like having a blast. That's awesome. And I was like, Oh, 
I can have fun. Okay. So I just started having fun. And I, um, I really got a lot out of working with Blythe as well. Um, she is so sweet and so kind and also very direct and very honest. And um, the scenes I did with her on a bench in Central Park, um, they're very, very special. Uh, it was, those were, that was a special day working with her. We both, we both really enjoyed each other's presence. And yeah. I'm really grateful for that. And I, I, it was always, it was very interesting to see how she worked as well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and um, yeah, it was an, ama- it was an amazing experience. And, you know, the paycheck was great. And I can only uh, imagine. Yeah. And, and I, uh, uh, I, I, it was, it was a very interesting time because my father was very sick. Um, and so booking made off while he was sick and then having to deal with sort of this family situation. Yeah. Um, and about like certain secrets, um, really resonated for me. And, um, I felt, I felt really lived in, in that part. Um, and I'm just, I'm really grateful for that. And to learn about the whole Madoff Ponzi scheme, the whole saga. Yeah. And I, d- I had no idea how destructive it was. It was insane. People killed had, themselves. Yeah. He stole from Holocaust survivors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible man. You know, and that's it's a just such a gnarly experience when you <laughs> did you have to take time away to be with your family after that um no i mean my dad was in and out of hospitals and then we uh uh i ended up after, after the job we ended up uh spending some time together and things sort of settled down but um my sister pointed out the other day that um she's like every time you book like a really cool role something really intense is happening in your life. Yeah. It's like this okay. mix of a good and a bad, you know? Yeah. But it, yeah. it, it has a, it, 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 for whatever reason it, it happens. And maybe it's because I have some sort of frequency energetically yeah. that um, people are sensing or feeling. I'm really not sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I hope to book work when I'm not in like a trauma. Yeah. Traumatizing yeah. I'm, I hope to book work. You're, you're vastly ahead of me, man. So, you know, <laughs> kudos to you. That's awesome. Uh, well, you know, we're jumping ahead, but you sure. know what, what we're here to talk about, I want to make sure we give it its justice time. Yeah, how, yeah. Did, how did Shiva Baby come your way? You know, uh, it was, uh, it, it, it's, it's a crazy story. Um, my father passed away two months before it. Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss, man. Thanks. And I came back to New York and just trying to figure, figure, think, figure things out. And I get an offer for this movie called Shiva Baby. And I was like, I got an offer? Oh, this is great. And I read the script and right away I was like, yes. Let's yeah. do this. And I was like, I was, I was ready to work. It was actually, I thought I was going to be like, no, I, I can't work. I have to like grieve and mourn. Yeah. But I was like, well, why don't I just be busy? Yeah. And be busy and grieve and mourn at the same time. See what yeah. that feels like, you know, cause life doesn't stop. So I, I said yes. And um, I met Emma and Rachel the day before we started filming. Was this for the short or for the feature? For the feature. Wow. For the feature. Um, and it, it was a dream come true doing that movie. Uh, did, did, we, we worked in a house together. Uh, we were filming for about two to three weeks. Wow. Um, uh, I made amazing friendships. Um, yeah. And Emma Seligman, the writer and director is, she's blowing up. She's doing great. She's yeah. got, she's, she's just, she understands how to sort of, deal with deal with like comedy and also pain yeah in a way that sort of metabolizes itself into catharsis yeah um and i uh i i just i i understood what she was trying to do yeah. um at least i thought i understood so and and the finished the final product is just 
incredible. The music, the editing, yeah. um, Rachel is incredible. Diana is incredible. And Molly, uh, Fred, Polly, everybody involved um, was just, there's no weak link. It's just, uh, I, I, I was, I was floored by it. Um, and I, you know, you, you asked me a question about like, what's it like being like a dude in a situation like that, right? Yeah, so yeah. that's something you wanted yeah, to allude totally. to? Totally, yeah. What, um, what was that? I think you, was it a... I, I, I mentioned how, you know, being uh, as a guy that yeah. I, I felt so myself, you know, it, it, obviously those performances were amazing. I was so interested in your character, at, yeah. you know, at, at, and I wanted to know more. And I was just curious because, you know, it, it's obviously a, I mean, honestly, I don't want to say it's a dark, it's, it's a very honest character. And, <laughs> you know, I, because I guess you could argue, even though it does take place, you know, most of it is in one setting. I'm curious, you know, did you, did you, did you guys have rehearsals? Did you, you know, rehearse it before, you know, what was it like being? We, we read through just the day before and, um, one thing that Emma and I talked about, she was like, so what do you, Emma, I don't remember what question she asked me about Max. And I said, well, I feel like, I feel like he might be kind of happy to actually see her at the Shiva. Yeah, yeah. Because he really likes her. Yeah. And like the, I, I like the idea of the playing the positive, yeah. no matter what. Like totally. there's already a problem. We already yeah. know that the sugar daddy don't and the need sugar an egg, the egg. Yeah, yeah. No, it's his yeah. hat on a hat. So yeah. I was like, well, what if what if he's like, obviously like surprised, but also like intrigued, yeah. and maybe even a little turned on, totally. you know? And and uh, and then he meets her parents, and then he finds out all the lies she's been telling him. Yeah. But like it it intrigues him because he's also a fucking liar. Yeah. And so I, I um, once, once I think Emma and I clarified that, it was like, I was like, okay, I get it. He's, and then things were popping up, like, and we got to like improvise a bit and um, we'd sort of just read through the scenes right before we'd film. And we'd so it was it. a little gorilla style. Wow. Yeah, we were all in a house. It was like 95 degrees. It was August. It was, it was. And tons But of it was amazing because because you're in a contained space so you get to know everybody and you become yeah. a family, yeah. you know, it's like, you're at the party every day and same um, people called you know, every day. I mean, I know coverage yeah. changes, but yeah, for the most part. So it's yeah. like, it's also nice to be part of a project that um, where you get to, you build a family and you get to know people. Yeah. And, it's the best feeling of working um, on any kind of art. You, you just get to really like do that. And I mean, that's why Madoff was great because I, I was able to show up on set for like two to three months Yeah, and just hang out and have a home. Um, cause it's hard when you do guest stars cause you just show up and you're like, you're the new kid in school and like- Totally, yeah. And so it's, um, that's what I really loved about it. It's, it's one of the aspects I really loved about it. Um, but I can't, I can't say there's no, I have no, no criticism. It was just so, um, refreshing and what inspiring. About, uh, tapping into, you know, the Jewish culture, you know, was that something, you know, you get this offer and then you're filming in a couple of days, you know, did you have, I mean, I, we went to NYU, let's be honest, but you know, I mean, did you have, I mean, you just, you, you portrayed it so beautifully. I'm, I'm curious, you know, it's so I have authentic. a secret. I have a secret to tell you. Yeah. I'm Jewish. Oh, you are. <laughs> yeah. No way. <laughs> I just assume yeah. all Latins are, are Catholic or Christian. Well, you know? well that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, there's, Cause there's plenty of Jews in Latin America. My, my mom. Well, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So I, I was bar mitzvah and everything. It was funny. It was like, uh, I had no idea. I, 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 you know, I didn't connect to it, uh, religiously or spiritually my yeah. bar mitzvah, but I, um, yeah, I, I know all about it. I went to Hebrew school and I went to synagogue and, uh, I felt, completely not connected to god so to yeah. speak yeah <laughs> yeah sorry if i'm offending any of your no uh, I'm, I'm an atheist so any, I'm, of, yeah. any of your uh, god loving viewers but i um yeah i just it wasn't on my it just i couldn't do it for some reason i just didn't believe that god existed yeah um but you can prove me wrong i uh I, yeah so i was i was like oh yeah i'm jewish and so there's a lot of argentine jews as well there's a big um 
My mom's family's side came from Turkey. They were but, Turkish Jews. Wait, it was a was a World War Two move to Argentina. No, or? it was it's, it was a mixture. It was just like, um, for example, my family like we don't have any uh, connection to say sort of like the Holocaust because yeah. my all of my family moved to Argentina uh, at the turn of the century in the nineteen wow. hundreds. Okay. So my mom, they were you know uh, Sephardic Jews from Turkey. Um, they moved to Argentina around, I don't know, 1914, something like that. And then my dad's side, Italian, um, and his mother was uh, Russian. Oh, so okay. also the Jewish thing or is no? That, uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, for, yeah. wow. I'm on both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's but I also, but I have an Italian last name, so it's, it's always, it's always, uh, it's always funny. That's amazing, man. <laughs> hey, so you're doing? I'm Danny Dufour. Yeah. You want to come? You want to, you want to come to my bar mitzvah? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's gonna yeah, be yeah. We're gonna play games. We're gonna play Twister. That's amazing. Man. There's gonna be cake and soda. Well, you know, I mean, talk to me about. about you, Shalom. You, I, th I think a lot of actors would have fully gone for that that accent and that trope. You know, what made you to decide to play it? I would say kind of neutral. You know, he's he, he's definitely Jewish, but you're not overdoing it in kind I mean, of a curb enthusiasm way no i mean i i don't know I, I just think that like he's there's no stock i think there's like i don't know i, I just didn't want to play a stereotype i just want to play a yeah. guy i really who, appreciated that about your character thank you i appreciate yeah. that because he he just he's just a guy just like trying to figure it out and i think that he i had this sort of backstory that he missed out on his 20s yeah uh i think that he he probably did everything that his parents told him to do and he uh he wanted to live a glory that he never got to yeah and um that's what he's doing with danielle yeah and he really enjoys these rendezvous that they have and he really enjoys spending time with her and listening to her talk about going to college yeah you know, her, all these her, aspirations for a law degree you know yeah, uh, yeah he likes it he and he likes giving her a bracelet he likes the companionship yeah. the sex is probably amazing but yeah. like at the same time it's also like she makes him feel um he's not old but she makes him feel younger not yeah. young but younger and um you know he's he's in a marriage that's not working for him yeah and and he feels emasculated and his wife makes all the money and entrepreneur just, said so many yeah <laughs> i love it yeah, yeah he's he's it's it, i felt i i really feel for him because i did too he, you know he, and that's why I, I felt guilty i know it's about this woman and amazing but i really felt i i guess if i'm being honest you know as a as an alcoholic and, and a recovery i identified with that guy because i was that guy for so long yeah you you can be a good person and make mistakes yeah totally and I think that um, the core of Max is that he's he's a good guy. He's just he's limited. He doesn't have tools. He's yeah. missing tools. He's and human. He's trying, you know. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's he's but he he really fucked up. Yeah. And and I, um, I I I feel for him. I I don't know if he's someone in real life that I'd want to like be close to. Yeah. But, um, you know, also like, like, what is it it's called sugaring or being a sugar daddy or sugar baby. Like yeah. it's not, it's a very, um, it's sort of a blurred line in terms of like, what is it exactly? And what both people are looking for things. Like yeah. she may be looking for an, uh, a self-realization of how she can feel more powerful, yeah. you know? And he's trying to also find power and also maybe find um, a little more direction. Yeah. And for him meeting this pretty young thing and getting to spend time with her yeah. um, makes him feel a little more clear and it makes him feel like he can sort of breathe and feel his feet and like maybe actually start the business that he's always wanted to start. Yeah. Um, but he's lost. Not be the plus one. Maybe that, or just yeah. be, or just be, be himself, be yeah. Max. I don't think he really knows. I don't think he's really asked himself certain questions that he should be asking himself. And I think 
by the end of the movie, he's probably going to start asking himself. Some yeah, yeah in especially fear. in that final scene in the van, you really feel, you know, that that that's where he's headed. And yeah, and maybe maybe him and maybe maybe him and and his wife will will work things out. You never know. Yeah, um, could be. Yeah. You never know. I mean, maybe there'll be a, a spinoff of. I, I could I could very easily see it, man. Uh, you know, t- talk to me when you have a character that's this rich and this interesting and yeah. this amalgamation of of you know things that are are polar opposite. You know, do you go back to a a Bob, you know, or a Ted and and work with them? Or, or yeah, you- um, I um, for this one I didn't uh, coach, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, I. I was feeling a lot and I was like, I'm going to work with what I'm feeling right now. And, and I, do you feel like a lot of what you were feeling, you know, like talk to me, if you would have booked it today, do you feel like Max would have been different than you would have portrayed him? I, th- I mean, probably there yeah. would have been something different, you know, we're all, and I, I maybe you can say that for, for every role of all time. Yeah. Of I don't know. I, I can only speak for myself was just like, you know, I was, you know, I, when I was on set, my father had passed. It was a bit of a, I had a secret. You didn't tell, tell just, wow, okay. No, no, I, di- I didn't, you know, and I, and I didn't want to make, I didn't want to make my job about that. I wanted to just be there yeah. on set and just like enjoy it Yeah. Um, and be grateful for this amazing opportunity. It's a very powerful and thing to do. I, I, I don't know if I would have the strength to do that. Thank you. I, 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 that's very nice of you to say. I, I mean, I, um, yeah. I know you do. I know. Um, yeah. I, I, um, I, I think that having that sort of uh, information that was private um, helped me give Max his sort of layer of secrecy as well. Yeah. Um, there was something there for me um, and it contained a certain amount of tension, I think possibly, at least for me acting, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to work with this. And I, and so what happens is I, I have two ways of working. And one of them is with, with Rob Cracker, which is all the behavior stuff about, yeah. he walks into the room, blah, 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 blah. No acting. I'm not thinking about acting. And then I also have worked with a guy named Josh Pice. He's also an actor. Okay. And he, and he has this thing called committed impulse. It's a technique uh, or a practice that he's created. And it's all about the physical manifestations yeah. that, that our thoughts, uh, for the most part, are just going to tell us that we suck. Yeah. So that we need to get into our bodies. Yeah. And he um, he really helped me with with trying to f- like finding my presence and my truth. Yeah. Um, and so I worked with those sort of uh, practices, and then after that, I memorized my lines. Um, for some reason, I don't I don't like memorizing first. Yeah, um, me neither. I just it's too dry for me. That's just. Yeah. Maybe it's just because I was a bad student. Yeah, <laughs> but I, know, I, I, understand. I, I so I like um, I like to like really get to know. I, I like I like to get to know the context, and I like to know the get to know the person first. Yeah. And then the memorizing actually comes very quickly. Wow. Um, but if I'm memorizing first, it's like I can't remember jack shit. <laughs> and I'm I'm curious, you know, for for you, Danny, as yeah. as Danny the journey from, from you coming into this with this gaping wound and the secret to the end of the three or four week shooting, did you feel, I don't want to say better, but different, you know, did it, did it absolve you? Did it heal you? Did it, did it not move it in a, you know, like I, I'm so curious. I think it healed me. I was just like, cause I had such a good time. Yeah. I think it was so nice to have fun after such a difficult event in my yeah. life. And, um, you know, uh, it, was, it was just, it was amazing. It was really fun. And then I, um, I got some time after the movie to like sort of chill and kind of lay down a bit and, yeah. you know, um, but then I started working. I, I, I did a, uh, I did some guest, guest spots and then i ended up doing another movie in florida in november wow. so it was a very it was november bizarre. 2020 november of 2019 okay cool 
right before the pandemic. Yeah. So I was, yeah. I worked consistently starting at from Shiva baby all the way through the end of the year, I was working a lot. Um, and I was really, I was really loving it. I was really digging it. And I was like, Oh, cool. This is great. I can be happy. I yeah. can be happy. Oh, I can have a good time. And like, it's not a big deal if something really bad happened to me yeah. or if it is that can happen at the same time. Um, yeah. I think that's what I learned particularly after, after doing Shiva baby yeah. was like that you can, you can still be an artist and yeah. also still be living your life at the same time. Totally. Like, like there's something about that, like certain things just don't stop in life. Yeah. It's just, everything, everything is just, everything's always happening. Everything is totally. like, totally. Every, life is, life is momentum. Yeah. And so like, there's no, so I'm, I'm kind of just playing with that sort of staying present and yeah. kind of going with it. And, you know, a lot of like what's helped me with the training with Josh Pice is that even when I'm in my head, I kind of check in with my body, you yeah. know, and that's actually what's really going on because yeah. everything else is the past. Totally. I know it sounds kind of uh, new agey, maybe no, whatever no. the word is, but I, I'm it's your truth, I'm, bro. I'm trying, I'm trying very, um, I'm trying very happily now to, to just be where I am. Like right now, I'm just speaking to you yeah. on my, on my computer screen. Yeah. And thank you and for doing these it. amazing, these yeah. amazing posters behind you. I oh, love it. Thanks. Is that, That's you Bukowski, got, you got Buddy Holly. I got Killy yeah. Murphy, yeah. Uma, oh, Helena, yeah. Kurt, you know, I had to do oh, yeah. a little wait, wait. something. Can you go up again? Yeah. Is that a picture of me above Buddy Holly? That is a picture. <laughs> yeah, dude. I got a shirtless from Kelly, you know, um, right before. And I, I, uh, I told her not to say. <laughs> well, you know, I, I had to Photoshop some clothes on you, you know. I appreciate I, that. I got to monetize this baby somehow. But uh, hey, hey, man. I, it, it, work is work. <laughs> if, if you don't mind me asking, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm very curious because it sounds like you had this, this trauma and then this beautiful artistic moment of kineticism. And then a pandemic happens and we all have this stillness that we have to figure out and live in our heads and learn to, you know, be okay with our thoughts or not be okay with them or fucking just acknowledge how you're feeling. Was mm -hmm. that a, was that a tough transition for you? Um, that's, it's a really great question. And it's also, so layered because yeah sorry i don't mean to no 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 yeah. don't apologize i'm yeah. actually i'm really thinking about yeah. that I think, I think there's a lot of great things that happened in the pandemic i ended up getting so much writing done um you know i wrote a pilot i wrote a i'm writing a short there's a proof of concept that'll become a feature down yeah. down the road i have a producer on that uh, i'm trying to shop this pilot around um, i did a lot of zoom readings of of my work uh, I have a writer's group. Wow. So oddly, this, the, the sort of the year of Zoom was very, very, very productive. Yeah. Um, wow. I, I was able to do voiceover from my home. Yeah. I was lucky enough to book a few jobs. Yeah, you do a lot of games, right? I do some video games. Um, last year, I did a, a UPS spot for, for, the, for essential workers. Oh, like, wow. there's all these, like, so I'm, 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 really grateful for the work I received last year as well. Yeah. 2019 and 2020 business-wise were decent. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I really, I had to be still and the winter was tough, Yeah. but I would go out and walk in the snow a lot and I would make phone calls and I would talk to my friends and I talked to my family and we would just talk Yeah. and not, not be worried about, meeting up um and there were some friends we would you know we would test and for like thanksgiving and and christmas and new year's i um i was able to you know be with some people we'd all get our our rapid and our pcr tests and yeah we would meet up in person and feast awesome and and so um but the solitude uh was difficult and also extremely useful. Yeah. And I do feel very um, 
I feel very different than I did say pre-pandemic. Yeah. Um, uh, things have slowed down in a certain way. Uh, I got to imagine though they're they're picking up now with this film for you. Oh, that's funny. I meant I didn't mean by work. I meant oh, okay. No, I was just I was getting philosophical. Okay, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I no, just like internally, it feels like the world, at least my world, is a little slower. Yeah, um, I, I I relate to that. I don't know, until un, until if I stay in the house until if I don't leave the house, then I start to get crazy. Yeah, so that's why I would go on these winter walks. But um, I didn't do that. So I went crazy. So that smart. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. We should go for a walk. You're in Brooklyn. Ah, dude, please. I'm in Williamspark, you know? Okay, great. Let's we'll yeah. Spanish and chill. Yeah, dude, That's please. Good. I would love that, man. <laughs> um, so you know, we'll, we'll talk to me, you know, now, mm-hmm. you know, this obviously did really well at the festivals, but was that during the, the pandemic festival circuit? Um, well, I believe the film, we were supposed to go to South by. In, yeah. Uh, 2020. It was March or was it April? I don't remember. It was, it was March. March. Could, that, that, that's it was when March. it starts. Yeah. It was March. Um, and, you know, it was canceled because yeah. of the pandemic, rightfully so. And so it was like, it really sucked. Yeah. And it really sucked because I really wanted to hang out with everybody. Yeah. I really wanted to go to the festival. And like, I remember like trying to, trying to choose my outfit. Yeah. I was like, I was like sending friends. I was like, is this good? Is this too normcore? Yeah. Is this like, shoot, is this hip enough? You know, and then a week later, you know, everything gets locked down. Yeah. And I, um, it sucked. But for some reason, I think the film, the this is just me talking. I think the film is exactly where it needs to be right now. Yeah. Because yeah. people have been starving for really cool new material. Yeah. Um, and it's about a Shiva. Yeah. And we all have to sit Shiva after this pandemic. Yeah. How do we, how do we unpack all of this death? Yeah. And, and I'm not trying to be like, no, it's I'm morbid. Trying. I'm just like, so many people died. Yeah. And like, and it's so funny when, when Rachel's character is like, mom, who died? Yeah. Mom, who died? Yeah. And then like, I asked myself, I was like, who died? And it's like a lot of people. Yeah. Millions. And a lot of people died. And um, even though the movie is a comedy and it's, it still has really, it has a real beautiful sadness to it about oh, yeah. not, not knowing what's next. That's what I think is, is great about any, any real great comedy is, is comedy is the overwhelming presence of tragedy, you know, in its truest form. Grounded in realism. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's why Emma's done such an amazing job. Yeah. Um, and the way she directed all of us and, and how she led the way. And uh, I, I'm, I'm in awe of her. She knows that I've told her I'm, I'm like, so. Well, it sounds um, like you're doing, you're, you're about to do the, the very similar amazing journey yourself. And if you need an actor, call me. <laughs> well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. yeah I, I'm, I'm pizza boy content. number seven. I'll do it. Oh, and I'm not oh, above no, it. No, no, no. You, you, you will be Jimmy, the pizza boy. No, come no, on. Thank you. <laughs> And Jimmy, Jimmy, thing. Jimmy's gonna have his own uh, his own arc, don't you? Cool. Worry. Just as long as I'm shirtless and you know pantsless, that's all I need. Um, I want you to. You should keep the shirt on, but you don't have to wear pants. It's funny. My my first audition for Alexa was for a nude scene, and I like so badly wanted it because it was I was gonna be having sex with a porn star while getting a FedEx delivery, and I was like, if that was my entrance to Hollywood, I I would just be so thrilled. And of course, I didn't get it. <laughs> what was but, that audition like well you know i guess they just trust you're gonna go nude so you come in and you do the scene and you know it was like i'm uh it's it, it's basically uh me showing the sex tape to a guy so they play the scene but then we'd show the footage so it was it wasn't the porn scene it was the <laughs> scene where i show them the porn but uh you know i think they wanted more like italian yonkers you know bigger than you know, me scrawny. Although I, I don't know. I, I still think I should have gotten it, but uh, I prepared for that one. Yeah. There'll be more. Yeah. I, I, yeah. There'll be more. There'll be more, There'll be yeah. more FedEx porn guys for you. I promise. Oh dude. Thanks to hear that. But dude, <laughs> this has been such an immense honor, man. I mean, I feel like you're my brother Great. now after, oh, after talking to this and I'm looking forward to hanging, man, but, but two final yeah, questions likewise. for you, yeah, you know, please. man, we, uh, 
we touched on on the question that I was I was going to ask, but if you could expand on it, you know, a lot of people in this pandemic weren't able to do the winter walks and to do the writing and Ooh. still, you know, even though we're, we're getting to a much better place, still aren't able to really focus, I guess, you know, so many people are, I think it's like, you know, sleep, sleepless and feeling exhausted all the time are really common phenomena of, of, of this lockdown. And, and what advice would you have to people, you know, to, I know that's a really loaded question. I'm sorry. No, I'm really, that. I'm really touched that you're asking me that. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I... But uh, yeah, get any any words of wisdom? Oh, I'm getting emotional thinking about that. Um, we all have to like be really nice to ourselves. Um, and I, you know, I I I think that if people can find a way to start their day peacefully, you know, yeah. not being on the phone, uh, maybe meditate in the morning. Yeah. Um, but like talk to people like, you know, therapy, whatever you can do. Um, uh, just kindness and, and checking in on people. Cause I, I know that maybe it can be healing to, to give someone a phone call to, to, to be like, how are you? Yeah. Just let people know that you're there for them. Um, this has just been really hard. I know that like my mom, my mom's high risk, but she got both vaccines, but it was scary. She, um, she had to get a pacemaker last year in May. So, and I had the quarantine with her in her apartment and I had to pick her up at the hospital and, you know, in May we didn't have, um, we didn't have the sort of education of what COVID no, was necessarily. You know, they, they started telling you that it was what you touched. Yeah. But it was actually in the air. And so we were wearing gloves at the time. I remember, you know? Yeah. So I would say, I, I don't know. I, I, anyone who's creating, like figure out a way to create at home on your own Yeah. or also don't, I don't know, whatever, whatever people, whatever is kind. And whatever that means to a person, you know, yeah. kindness, kindness to yourself is different for, for lots of different people. Like, I don't yeah. know, maybe it's having a cup of coffee and that's yeah. all you do for the day. And, and that feels good, but uh, I, I just hang in there yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that it's not, it's also not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. It's, it's, it's a, it's a fucking pandemic yeah. and, and it's an economic cratering Yeah, and um, we also have a huge racial reckoning in this country. I and, mean, um, feels like more than ever, you know, my, even my own father said it seems worse than the sixties, you know what I mean? And maybe that's just because of the cell phone documentation, but you know, it, it, it is, it is insane. brother. It is just so sad. Yeah. And it's our responsibility as artists to reflect society. Yeah. I, 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 for me, it's like, I wholeheartedly believe in, in that idea that like I'm seeing something I'm digesting it and I need to express myself because I want, I want people to know how I feel about something. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily, maybe it's selfish. I don't know, but it's, it's, um, it feels like a responsibility sometimes for me yeah. to, to do that. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm very moved that you asked me, Oh what no! Advice, what, what advice I had for people, and it's—I mean, I don't know. If people want to give me a call and hang out. We can just chill in a park or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, hey, that's your DMs are going right. to be flooded after this, man. That's so funny. Oh, oh, but uh, you know, I—I I, I hate to stay on the words of wisdom thing, but you know, going back to the young Danny, you know, wide-eyed who who uh, graduated, lazy and, Danny, and had you know this five-year journey at four year for you five year for me before they got rep you know no you know i always find it fascinating interviewing actors and you know where they are now and how you think all these things are never going to happen and they don't happen on your watch but they they happen in different ways and it, sometimes it's better and sometimes it's worse than you could ever but it, it, it it's beautiful because it, it's true and it's a journey and for all those, you know, young actors listening and that don't have Shakespeare and co and, and are in this pandemic and 
feel like, I mean, it, it, I think we can all say the industry isn't at its busiest and most booming, you know, what, what advice would you just have? I guess is what I'm really asking. I'm meandering. Sorry, but no, you're not meandering. I get it. I, I think that, um, you chose to be an actor. You chose to be an artist. You chose one of the most impossible professions to succeed in. And there's a pandemic and the economy is in shambles. But if you really think that you can do it and that you really, 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 really want it, just hang in there and don't despair, don't give up. And um, you'll toughen up. Like I I also like, I think younger generation of actors who are going through this right now are gonna be so tough once we're out of the pandemic. They're gonna be so fucking tough. Um, I know that this doesn't compare, but I know that during the the Great Recession, when I had that year where I yeah. signed with an agent, and then I had zero auditions for a full year, and I was broke, and yeah. I was barbacking, and I hated, I hated everything except oh, for pizza. Yeah. Except for pizza. Pizza was the only thing I liked in that I year. I get that, man. You know, I did the I, same when I was barbacking. <laughs> I'd always get the two slices and the Diet Coke, and oh, yeah, go dude. back and just fucking cry why bust all the dishes <laughs> or I just eat more more after yeah that. yeah and totally just yeah. but i would say the that you'll you know that that toughened me up it made me realize that you can have a drought for a year and then things can get better um and i don't think things can really get that much worse yeah me either in terms, dude. Of, in terms of the industry um yeah. and so i think that the young actors who are coming up are they're going to be okay and like you know shiva baby is a is a is an example of that like yeah. um all these amazing young artists just like fucking doing it yeah you know what i'm saying yeah how inspiring yeah. that is yeah totally um, I do. It's, you know emma and that whole team and the producers and you, dude, and fucking you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. But the, the, the whole thing is a revelation that, yeah. like, if you just put your mind to it and you really work your ass off, yeah, and you fail a bunch, which you will, you have to fail. Yeah. You have to fuck up. You have yeah. to like, it's you know. Only way. I, I, you know, I, I audition and I, I don't get shit sometimes. It yeah. takes a long time, you yeah. know. And I'm like, is this it? Should I, should I go to grad school? Yeah. You know I still think I mean? about like, that all the time. You of know? course, everyone, yeah. I think everyone has their own sort of escapist sort yeah. of idea of like, can I keep doing this? And sometimes I have a mentality or uh, at least I'm just like, all right, tonight I quit. Yeah. Just tonight I quit. Yeah. Like, I yeah. don't want to do this right now. Yeah. I quit, you know, and I go for a walk or I, I call a friend of mine and um, uh, I don't know, I just futz about on YouTube and, and I, acting is like, at least as an actor, it's like, or even being an artist is like, it's this kind of ineffable sort of energy. Yeah. Like, you don't, it's, it's not like you're like, I don't know if I could ever actually leave. Maybe you can leave the business. Yeah. But you can't ever leave your own artistry. No, no way. You can't. And so like, even if people, and you have to decide like, what, what is success for you? Yeah. Like right now, being able to talk to you is success for me. Yeah, it feels, it feels amazing. Yeah. Of course, just like yeah. hanging out and talking about your craft. Yeah. And like, you know, having a conversation about really like groovy, fun, positive, awesome shit is, is, yeah. is success. I don't know. Yeah. Lunch, it's beautiful. Later, lunch is going to be my late lunch is going to be success. I don't yeah. know. Like, I just think that people. It's funny. Really, I'm, I'm big in food too. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. I always think about food. Yeah. So like, yeah. that's a success. I don't know. I just. It doesn't have to be as grand and as complicated as uh, pop culture tells us it has to be. I think that's such a fucking a brilliant comment. And I think the Instagram thing is has done some serious damage. But I think the pandemic has kind of brought some of that back to reality, you know. And mm -hmm. that's some of the best advice I've ever had, man. And this oh, has you. been such a fucking beautiful conversation yeah my thanks. gratitude is everlasting and and we gotta oh. fucking 
we got to do do something together and and hang dude you know this that is sounds great and, this and is incredible so many amazing things are in store for you and 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 fucking <laughs> come back dude please okay whenever yeah. whenever you yeah. want me yeah dude i do dude, let me know dude thank you sending you so much love brother oh thank you this was amazing all thank right. you so much